Hey, this is Aaron Hobson with Red Hook Guitar. And if you've made it this far, that means my last lesson on intervals didn't scare you off. So I'm happy that you're able to move on from that one. <laughs> um, because there's a lot to learn. And there's a lot to do applying those intervals. So again, I'm just making these videos for fun. They're more for my students and friends who don't live nearby. Maybe my brother out in New Paltz who's learning guitar. Um, so hopefully you find this information useful. Um, so today I'm going to talk about a couple of basic scales. So one of the easiest scales to learn and to intellectualize and to understand and to play is the chromatic scale. And usually first day of class, that is the scale that I teach my students because it's also a really good uh, finger warm-up and good finger exercise. Um, a lot of my students call it the spider crawl because your fingers kind of look like a spider. <laughs> so anyway, it's a really easy scale. When you say chromatic, you're moving in half steps. Um, and on guitar, that's just from one fret to the next. So what I'm playing here is all chromatic. Alright, so I'm going to start in this first position. I'm going to start with the open E. Um, and we learned from lesson one that this note is F on the first fret. F sharp, G, G sharp. Then we go to the open A string, A sharp, B, C, C sharp, open D, D sharp, E, F, F sharp, open G, G sharp, A, a sharp, we're not going to go to this B here because your next open string is also B and that would be unison, that wouldn't be chromatic. So open B, C, C sharp, D, D sharp, open E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp. So if you say the notes while you're playing the chromatic scale, it's also a good way to uh, remember your notes. And you can start it anywhere. So if I started on this A on the fifth fret and did the same thing, A, A sharp, B, C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A, and so on. So you could start it anywhere, say the notes as you play them. It's a good way to learn your notes. It's also just a good finger exercise. You know, the more that you play, the more that you play this, and the more, you know, the faster that you play it, you're gaining dexterity in your, your hands and your fingers. So it's a pretty easy um, scale. So examples of that in music, you've heard it so many times, like the bass line to Dazed and Confused in Led Zeppelin. That's just moving in half steps, that's chromatic. Um, Master of Puppets, that's all chromatic. Uh, the pre-chorus to Symphony of Destruction by Megadeth, right? that's all chromatic, just moving in half steps. I was teaching um, Rosalita by Bruce Springsteen yesterday, and there's this whole section in the um, the bridge where it goes from C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E. So that's all just this chromatic climb up in the bridge section. So it's a scale that comes up all the time and it's really easy and it's, it's a good one to know. Um, the other scale I wanted to talk about today is another really important one. The major scale. Um, you've heard it a million times. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. If you've seen The Sound of Music, do, a deer, a female deer. Um, it's a very happy scale. It's a really common scale. And it's a really good one to know. So, um, talking about going back to intervals. So, in a major scale, you have seven tones. Um, and the the rule is this, the formula is this. So you start on a root, so say, I'm gonna pick C because C is known as the people's key. It's the easiest key, and the reason why it's the easiest key is because there are no sharps and there are no flats. Um, if you're looking at the piano, again, I always go back to the piano, 
One of my students said to me yesterday, why are you teaching me about piano? I play guitar. <laughs> and I said, because if you visualize a piano, if you go out there right now and look at a piano keyboard, this is going to make a lot of sense to you visually. And uh, so anyway, the, um, all of the white keys on the piano are the key of C major. So if you start on the middle C and then you go up all the white keys, that's your C major scale. On guitar, it looks like this. So here's a C. I'm playing the first fret of my B string. So I go one whole step to D, another whole step to E, a half step to F, whole step to G, whole step to A on the 10th fret, whole step to B on the 12th, half step to C. So Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti, Do. And then you can go backwards, So the way to memorize that is whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. Two holes and a half, three holes and a half. So that's the formula. So going back to intervals, and I'm going to write all this in the description. Going back to intervals, uh, remember we talked about major second, major third, major sixth, major seventh. So when you're talking about, if you analyze these in terms of intervals, if I start on the C, and I go a whole step, that's defined as a major second. If I go another whole step, that's a major third. If I go a half step from there, that's a fourth. If I go a whole step from there, that's a fifth. If I go another whole step, that's a major sixth. If I go another whole step, that's a major seventh. And my half step goes back to my octave C. So um, major scale, major intervals. So. Um, a big happy family, <laughs> tying all that information in together. Um, so you want to memorize the this uh, scale, and I would start with C because it's the people's key, it's the easiest key uh, to think about. So the notes are C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. You just go through the alphabet from C to C. Um, so when you learn your notes, uh, from lesson one, you'll know that this is a C here, and then open D, E on the second, F on the third, open G, A, B, C, and then you can go backwards. Goes nicely with a C major chord, right? But you can also go this way up the next, so C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, also have a C here on the 8th fret of the top string, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. So my point is you can start on any C and play through that major scale once you know your notes. Now there's books on this stuff, There's, uh, I'm sure if you googled um, C major scale patterns, you could find all the little scale patterns across the neck and in tablature and what have you to learn them. Um, but you want to learn them in every position all over the neck because, you know, you're going to be playing music all over the neck. It's, it's just a better, it's more musical that way than to be stuck in one position or two positions and not be able to get out of it. Um, so anyway, um, I want to talk about what a key is. You may have heard someone say, well, what key is this song in? Or uh, ask about a key and maybe you didn't know exactly what that meant. Um, and a key basically tells you what notes are in the scale and how many sharps and flats there are. Um, so, like I said, the C major scale is the easiest because it has no sharps or flats. Um, so, uh, learning the major scale, um, again, you know, a good way to do this is to write these out. Um, Again, back in my high school days in study hall, that was my favorite thing to do when I was bored. I would just take out a piece of paper and a pencil and I'd be like, okay, what notes are in the key of G? And I'd just map it all out. What notes are in the key of A? And I'd map it all out and, you know, kind of do that as a mental exercise. And that's really the only way is to think about it when, you know, to think about it all the time and work on it. Um, I know it's like really mathematical. <laughs> not a lot of people want to do that. Not a lot of people are in that mindset. But um, I'm going to give in the description, uh, you know, examples. I'm going to write out different keys for you. And um, the goal is to be able to play the major scale 
in every key. That should always be your goal. Um, so once you get comfortable with C major, maybe move on to G major, and then maybe move on to D major, etc. And I'll put all that in the description. But anyway, uh, so today's lesson, the chromatic scale, just moving in half steps. different positions. And then the major scale. Uh, do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. Right? Playing it on one string, it's very easy to visualize those half steps and whole steps. But it's not very practical to play that way on the guitar. I mean, it's fun for an effect sometimes, but you really want to learn your patterns and position across the neck. So, um, you know, it's a big study, learning your major scale, but it's going to come in handy uh, later on when we talk about things like the diatonic chord progression and analyzing what chords go with what scales, etc. So, anyway, hope that was helpful.